So I'd like to go through one more example together that I think teaches some important principles and how we can use RoboCode. And then I'll just go through some general tips and tricks and hints on, on things I've observed to help be, yeah, your bot be successful. And so one of the things that we're doing is when we get hit by a bullet, the default behavior is to go back by 10. Now, you may be backing right into the bullet or right back into the line of fire. There's no intelligence with this. We just go back by 10 and 10 is not really that far. I mean, the bot's 50 pixels wide or whatever it is, then we're still kind of in danger. And so it might be smarter to put some sort of intelligence to this. And so if we go look at the RoboCode API, so help RoboCode API, and it really wants me to speak Danish. Um, then in the robot class, I can see that I have this on uh, hit by bullet method. And so this is triggered. It's called when your robot is hit by a bullet. And what's passed to us is a hit by bullet event. And so again, on that instant that I'm hit by a bullet, this class is generated, an instance of this class is generated. So in the shape of a hit by bullet event, in the template, in the mold of a hit by bullet event, it's gonna stamp out uh, some information for me. And then when I get hit by a bullet again, it does the same thing. Every time I'm hit by a bullet, it, it generates a new object for me and hands it to me with information about that uh, event that just happened. And so in the case of a hit by bullet event, it gives me the bearing, it gives me the bearing and radians, it gets the actual bullet, the object that hit me with its information in there. It gives me the heading the bullet was relative to the board, it gives me the heading and radians, it tells me the name of the robot that we'll use in a minute, it tells me the power of the bullet and the velocity. So when I get hit, all this information is packaged up into a hit by bullet event object and hand it to me so that I can do something with it. And so I might just generally want to take a strategy and say, uh, at least let's try and get out of the path of where the bullet came from. So if I use the same strategy I used with the wall, I could say turn right, but I can turn right, um, so the e.getBearing, that would turn me into the bullet. I don't necessarily want to do that. But if I take the e.getBearing and add 90 to it, then that should get me perpendicular to the bullet. And then maybe I'll move ahead enough that I feel like I'm going to get out of the way of the bullet. And so we can watch this work. I'll, uh, did I compile? Compiler, compile. Sometimes I forget. And then battle new. And then start the battle. And we should see myself now when I get shot at some point here. Then I turn, and that, that was perpendicular to where I got shot from. I made a whole spin, and so I could go and try and address that. But as soon as I get shot, I'm making a turn to try and get out of the way of that bullet. And by the way, just that move alone, if you watch, all of a sudden I'm starting to take first. I can restart it. So getting out of the line of fire yeah, is, is important. Obviously, it's made a difference in my robot. But sometimes, when I've noticed this, when I'm in RoboCode, if I'm making a move, I'm not firing, and I'm not implementing my strategy to be more aggressive in trying to win. And so sometimes I'm hit by a bullet, but it was kind of a fluke. And so maybe what I want to do is not move unless I'm hit multiple times, and then I'll make the move. And so let's say three times in a row. If I'm shot three times in a row, so how can I implement that strategy? I want some sort of counter to keep track of how many times I've been shot. So I'm gonna put in here um, an int called uh, num times shot, and I'll set it equal to zero. And then every time I'm shot, I want to increment it by one. So that's an incrementer, if you're not familiar with them. It's the same thing as saying num times shot equals num times shot plus one, so go take whatever was already in there and add one to it and then put it back in there. These two lines are equivalent um, in Java and C Sharp and C++ and C and a bunch of different languages. So 
Um, we're incrementing by one. This is just a shortcut way of saying this. All right, so I'm gonna increment that by one and then I can make a decision here and say if the num times shot is greater than or equal to three, then we'll make this move. So I'm only gonna worry about it if I've been shot three times in a row. And then after I've made my move, I can reset the counter by saying go set num times shot equal back to zero. Now hopefully, if you, uh, you are saying there's a problem here, and the problem is that um, this variable is being declared inside the method. And there's two problems with that. One is it's already always getting set back to zero every time, so we'll never get to three. But then the other problem is that this variable, because it was declared inside the on hit by bullet event, or, or sorry, well, the event, but the method, then it lives and dies between this brace and this brace. That's its whole life. As soon as we hit this end brace, this variable is released from memory and it's not being stored any longer. And so it's not going to perpetuate past that, you know, one time we get shot, it's just going to be redeclared every time. And so if I want this variable to live on, then I need to get it out of the method and I need to put it up at the class level. The class level's braces are here and here. And sometimes it's helpful to put a little note on where the class ends. And so its life is between this brace and this brace. And so now, if I drop this variable in and declare it here, then it will live in memory as long as RoboCode Fun is in memory. So as long as the bot is alive, then it will keep this. And so it will now, I'm declaring it here, and I could, it's always good to put a little comment in and say, uh, keeps track of how many times in a row I have been shot and then makes the move and so um, I can save that compile it and then uh, test it so I can come in here I can do it just at the thousand level and just see if it makes a difference in terms of how you know what percentage of the time I'm winning um, and I seem to be doing pretty well. I don't know that it made a big difference from what I was doing, and so I might choose not to implement it if I don't want to. But if I watch it in a, in a slower uh, mode, then I can watch it work. So let's see if I can, okay, there's one. I don't know if that was one or two I got shot. But as soon as I get shot the third time, although I think I just did get shot the third time and it didn't move, I did compile, right? Oh, there we go. So that must have been the third time. I think the problem is we started counting at zero, so it's actually four times. <laughs> but you can see I'm not making my move until I get shot uh, multiple times. And so that's the type of strategy that we can implement. Um, let's see. Um, and I could go further. I could, I could keep track of, is it the same person that shot me multiple times? So I could create a variable up here, a string called you know, who shot me and set that equal to blank. And then I could make a decision and only make this move or only increment if it's the same person that shot me uh, multiple times. And so the point is I can declare stuff up here at the class level and then use those variables all throughout um, any of the methods that I'm using in my program. And so I think that's an important principle um, uh, to look at. If, by the way, if we do use a string, the way we compare strings in uh, Java, so if I was to say, if the person who shot me, so the e dot, e dot get name, I would need to use the dot equals, or dot equals ignore case is what I typically prefer. And then I could compare that to the who shot me variable that I just created, and then make a decision from there uh, based on that. So. Anyway, I could only, you know, I could take an only increment if it was the same person that shot me multiple times in a row and I need to keep track of who did it. But anyway, you get the point. So uh, I think that principle is important. So in the next video, we'll talk about tips and tricks. Spencer out.